All right, Victorum Gaming fans, we're back with another faction review video for Hail Caesar. Um, and so, obviously, if you're a Hail Caesar fan, too, uh, welcome back. So, uh, the next up in our list that we're covering here, we're still stuck in the uh, Bronze Age for the most part. Uh, we're working our way forward in time. Uh, so, today's list that we're taking a look at is the Libyan list, which, again, might not make any sense to you if you um, uh, aren't necessarily familiar with some of the sort of lesser known types of forces here but uh, these guys cover uh, roughly as it says here 13th through 2nd centuries BC so that's you know a good chunk of time so um, just a quick part of the description here just to sort of fill people in if you're not familiar with it so the barbarian tribes of Libya formed the western threat to Egypt throughout much of its early history the Libyans allied with the sea peoples to attack uh, Egypt at the, in the time of Ramses III um, Libyans themselves weren't uh, hugely dissimilar to the Egyptians in terms of skin tone, probably um, Berbers of North Africa. Um, so, And as it says here, the list covers a long period of time, overlaps with some of the other classical lists. So there's some compromises made here in some of the like list and units uh, available. But um, beyond that, it's um, we'll see it's pretty similar to a lot of the other lists that we've been looking at from this region for Bronze Age. So... Um, and um, coming up next in our next video in the series, we'll actually be looking at the Sea Peoples too, so it's actually good that these tie in together like that. So um, what do we get in this list? So it's another one of those where there's going to be a lot of infantry, skirmishers, and um, some chariot action, basically. So the, kind of the standard template that we've seen for a lot of these Bronze Age Mediterranean Near East uh, armies. So infantry does have to be at least 75% here, um, other than skirmishers. Um, Light infantry javelins um, uh, have to be um, uh, armed with javelins, basically, in one kind or another. So the non-skirmishers, that's an interesting little wrinkle there. Uh, chariots up to 25% of the army here. Um, but again, they're really basically just light uh, chariots, as we'll see. Um, then the usual sort of uh, restrictions here on divisions, units per division, skirmishers per division, all that fun stuff. So jumping into the list, again, it's not, another, it's not, a, not a huge list at all. And there's, um, again, just the usual types uh, that we've seen here in these uh, more recent lists with the Bronze Age, but you do have some cool options. So Libyan Light Infantry Warband with Javelins uh, does have a clash of seven, so that's definitely uh, pretty uh, beefy there. Just drops off to a five on sustained. A little bit of short range firepower, some t-shirt uh, morale saves, all for 21 points. And then you have uh, a whole series of upgrades here. So um, you can give them Javelins and Bows for one point um, and that basically just adds a point of long range ability for you so um, certainly a, a good little upgrade I uh, can't really uh, complain about that can't see a reason why you wouldn't want to do that um, unless you're struggling for points um, then you have some uh, basically special rule upgrades um, so uh, extra to make either of the above uh, chieftain's guard uh, you get to do that for one unit so you might as well field that unit um definitely a little bit more elite and for two extra points basically what that does is uh you get tough fighters and stubborn so especially in the list like this with not a lot of staying power um having some uh pretty solid special rules like that is going to be good uh and then extra to make the above any of the above wild fighters so um so the cool thing there is for three extra points you can make all of your light infantry here wild fighters um you know any of the above um, stats don't change on these, so, um, you know, if you want to do something pretty crazy and uh, very offensive and kind of maybe scary to an opponent who might not suspect uh, this is um, just having a whole bunch of your infantry be wild fighters and, um, you know, going for that shock value there. But um, definitely a good argument to consider, um, you know, like I said, upgrading to the chieftain's guard unit and then making wild fighters on top of that. Yes, that's going to be a lot of points. Um, and especially if you also made them have javelins and bows, um, uh, mixed javelins and bows, uh, you know, you've gone for the full upgrades here, so that's an extra six points for that unit. But, um, again, you've added a little bit of ranged firepower, uh, long ranged as you're moving up, um, or as things get closer to you. And then you have tough fighters, stubborn and wild fighters all in a list that again is not necessarily, you know, featuring, you know, heavy infantry, heavy cavalry, anything like that. So, um, you know, having this one, like, pretty decently elite unit is uh, well worth the points. Now, again, um, that might draw a lot of attention, a lot of heat uh, from your opponent. Um, so something to consider there. But, um, you know, if they're focusing on just one of your units at the cost of ignoring some of your other units, um, you can obviously think of ways to turn that to your advantage. 
Um, after that, we move on to basically the the missile troops and the skirmishers and stuff. Um, so we have light infantry with javelins. Uh, still some solid uh, close combat ability there, fives. Um, and then we have uh, a three for the short range, nothing else there, and then the 19 points per unit. So not bad at all. And then we go on to a uh, bow armed unit. We drop off on combat a little bit, but we get a solid three for long range um, for one extra point for the unit, which is honestly fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, giving you rock solid long range firepower. Um, so definitely worth fielding multiple units of that. And then you can do, you can take a reduction to field those as small units too. Again, uh, stats drop off correspondingly, uh, a really solid, uh, discount on the points for the unit. And you still have a long range of two, which is again, still solid. So, um, so that really should be a good chunk of your list there. Um, just to, uh, soften up again enemy as they're coming in or you're moving forward or whatnot um just to make it easier on your uh your warband units up above so uh then the actual true sort of skirmisher units uh, with javelins as small units um again overall weaker stats than above um uh, but again these guys are skirmishers and then similarly you can give um bows instead of javelins for up to half of those units and again um Still a little bit weaker overall on the like close combat as the above light infantry, but uh, the ranged is basically uh, very similar here. Um, so uh, and fairly cheap per unit too. So, and then we get into your little mobility here, which does add again some more uh, ability, some firepower, some combat. Um, you have two horse light chariots with javelin crews, um, sixes on combat, so that's solid, especially for this era. Uh, three on the short range, very good and then a four up morale save so the best morale that you're going to get in your list here for 27 points a unit not bad at all and then if you wanted to go a little bit um heavier even though it's still a light chariot here a four horse chariot basically bumps that clash up to eight which is actually pretty scary and all with a four plus morale save still no special rules or anything and interestingly uh compared to some of these other lists no chariot runners I'm not sure if that was an oversight or not but um you know it just definitely adds a little bit of a different use to these guys so no extra upgrades there um and you know you, for two extra points you get um the for the four horse chariot that's two extra clash that can be um well worth it so um you know adds a little bit of mobility and um, some shock value to the army, um, so uh, definitely some good stuff there. And interestingly, compared to so many of the other lists that we've seen here, though, here's where um, things are going to be a little bit trickier for you, um, depending on how you set your list up. So uh, the general does have leadership 8, like we've seen with so many of these other lists. However, all the other commanders are leadership 7, and there's no way around that. So um, you're definitely going to have to play pretty tight and um, not get greedy with the list. Um, leadership 7... Um, uh, is going to be a little bit rough trying to get some of these more impressive maneuvers and actions and stuff like that and make these orders happen. So um, your general is definitely going to be working overtime to make sure that your army is functioning. But um, yeah, you're going to be going to have a little bit of an uphill battle here with that leadership seven. So, but overall, that's the Libyans, guys. Um, pretty cool list. Again, some interesting options here. A lot of that Bronze Age flavor that we've seen across so many of these recent lists, but um, some new wrinkles as well. And again, modeling-wise, there's um, several different um, things you can do there. A lot of these uh, tr troops from this era, basically. Um, there's some fairly generic kits and models like that, and it just depends on how you want to paint them up and stuff like that. So there's definitely a lot of options. Um, and the fact that these guys, um, again... Uh, also allied with the Sea Peoples for a little bit, which we'll be covering in our next video. So you definitely could do some interesting modeling options there. Um, but yeah, Libyan, so again, covers a whole huge range, so definitely a little bit of research uh, can make that an even more interesting army for you to collect. And again, as we saw, they do some interesting things uh, as far as um, the gaming aspect goes too, so um, definitely another fun one to collect that's a little bit off the beaten path compared to some of the more well-known armies out there. So uh, if you could, smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and then stay tuned for more Hail Caesar content.